Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. Haiti now has a new interim president, former parliament head Jocelyn Privel. He was voted into office by parliament after massive fraud in the October 25th presidential election, which left the Caribbean country without credible election results. The international community, represented by the Organization of American States, OAS, supported the initial results, which placed former President Michel Martelly's party candidate in a runoff. But after massive protests and a coordinated effort between civil society, opposition parties, and the diaspora, Michel Martelly stepped down at the end of his term on February 7th. He left office without an elected successor, and it will be up to this interim government to orchestrate fair presidential and partial legislative elections. Now joining us to unpack all of this are our two guests. Glenn Ford is the executive editor of Black Agenda Report and also joining us is Francois Pouillet-Louis. He is the associate professor of political science at Queens College. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. So Glenn, you see this news as a real victory for the Haitian people. What makes the appointment of a new interim president so victorious? Well, you know, it's been 12 years since the United States overthrew the democratically elected uh, government of, uh, uh, of, of Haiti uh, and imposed its own rule and then brought in uh, the United Nations, which now occupies Haiti with an armed force that then infected the country with cholera and won't take responsibility. So uh, Haiti uh, has not enjoyed its national sovereignty, its nationhood uh, in 12 years. And then, then in uh, 2010, under uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, uh, the U.S. forced upon Haiti in a rigged election. Uh, the nightclub entertainer uh, Michelle Sweet Mickey Martelli as the new uh, president, and Haiti has had uh, to live under his uh, rule for the last five years. But, uh, so, so finally, to have uh, the the United States. Uh, and its desire to call the shots in every election in Haiti uh, thwarted uh, by this uh, new call for uh, a transitional government and then elections that the Haitian people uh, can put together. Uh, yeah, that's that's a victory. That's certainly a, a good mark after 12 years of, of no sovereignty. But Glenn, do you give the Martelli administration any credit here too? I mean, Martelli did step down at the end of his term. And as we know, it's not always the case in Haitian politics politics, especially with the legacy of the Duvalier dictatorship in recent memory. So doesn't he deserve some credit here? You know, I, I, it's very difficult for me to give credit to murderers because they could have murdered more people. I don't know if the United States is uh, distracted by the events in Syria uh, or whether the fact that Hillary Clinton could be embarrassed in her run for presidency if Haiti uh, uh, occupied too high a profile in the news. Uh, but uh, I, I don't think that we can give credit uh, to uh, Martelli for stepping down as the Constitution required. Okay, Fuswas, let's get you into this conversation. Do you agree? Should Martelly get any credit here for stepping down? Well, first, let me see. I think uh, Mr. Glenn is going too fast in saying it's a victory for the Haitian people, the fact that uh, there is a transitional government. Yes, there is a change, but we don't know yet. Because the uh, Mr. Priver came as president based on a deal with Martelli. And we know at the last minute, Martelli was trying to put in his own guy as president provisional government. And we know also that the majority of the members in parliament came from Martelli's party. And they are going to play a decisive role in the future. So therefore, we have to wait instead of, you know, claiming uh, a lot of victory right now. Yes, there's a change. But we have to wait and see how it's moving forward, because Privé has not set up his cabinet yet, and he has not a, a, a named the members of the Provisional Electoral, electoral Council who will be uh, holding the, the next round of the elections. Having said that, I think Matili had no choice uh, but to step down, not because he wanted to. Matili wanted to stay until May 14th, or as long as he could. However, as we all know, Martelly is not his own man. Martelly is, is, uh, is controlled by the international community, primarily the uh, State Department. So I think even though the State Department tried at the last minute to have a one-man election, 
in Haiti, when they realized that wasn't happening and it couldn't happen, that's when they decided to encourage Matéli to leave. And I think uh, the fact that uh, there could have it, there could have been a, a, not a civil war, but a lot of violence, more violence than we've seen on the streets of Port-au-Prince if Matéli did not step down. They could, because Matéli already had his gangs ready to shoot people, to create uh, civil strife. But the fact that we had a transition that was peaceful, I think it's worth something. And yes, Matéli... Um, He's not the best man, but at the same time, I think we have to acknowledge that he, he decided to leave instead of holding on and pushing, which okay. I, I think we have to give him some credit for that. Okay, Fosas, let's talk a little bit more about this man that replaced Martelly, the interim president, uh, Privel. Let's talk about his record a bit. Uh, he, he once served... Um, under uh, former President Jean-Bertrand Aristide as the interior minister. What else do we know about him? He is an accountant. He is a member of the business uh, community, and he, he does uh, book on the books of many businesses in Haiti. He is also someone who works on decentralization and, um, and uh, trying to set up the municipalities, organize them. He was also an advisor to René Préval, and he became senator at the end of the Préval administration's term. So it is true that uh, Préval is seen as a moderate of the Lavalas people. And I'm not sure how much of his relationship is still with Aristide or whether his relationship is more with Préval. Because as you know, within the Lavalas camp, you have the um, Préval camp and we have the Aristide camp. So therefore, and also Préval, Although he was a senator for six years, he worked, he worked well with Matéli. Do not estimate, underestimate, the relationship that Privet may have had with Matéli. Because uh, from information that I've gotten a uh, long time ago, I know he was very helpful in helping Matéli you know, on a series of uh, domestic uh, agenda issues. So therefore, I think we still have to wait to see whether this compromise that came for as Privet being the you know, provisional head of government, whether really it wasn't coming out also from a pact between uh, Matelli and the uh, sec some sector of the Lavalas movement. And just really quickly, you mentioned domestic policies he helped Martelli with. Can you just point to some specifics? Well, for example, uh, at one time I, I heard that Matelli was trying to, you know, Matelli is from Côte de Fer. And Matéli was trying to change the territorial boundaries of Côte de Fer so he could make it a, a, in a, put it in a different department and a different municipality. And I think Privet was very helpful in, in uh, helping Matéli look at these things. Okay. And so therefore, you know, I don't think he was hostile to Matéli as such. Okay. Now we know that Haiti's provincial, provisional government will be organizing Haiti's twice postponed presidential and partial legislative runoffs, which I mentioned. And President Privet will certainly have an issue of credibility to wrestle with. So, Glenn, if you were to advise the new interim president, what would you recommend um, hit, that they do to get free and fair elections in Haiti? And is it even possible with the presence of the UN peacekeeping force, MINUSTA, in the country? Well, I, I couldn't put myself in the position of, of advising anybody's president, but I can say uh, that the professor uh, is right. Nothing is guaranteed uh, here. Things are in flux, uh, and, uh, and, and not even an open and free uh, presidential election is guaranteed. Uh, but many uh, Haitians, of course, uh, point out uh, that the parliament itself was not elected by a free, open, and fair process. And uh, they're not just uh, uh, accepting the legitimacy of that body uh, either. Okay, Francois, same question to you. Um, what would you advise President Privel do in order to restore credibility to the process? Well, you know, usually Haitian presidents have a lot of advisors. But you know what? Having worked with, uh, for two presidents in the past, they don't listen to advisors. <laughs> So they're not going to listen to anyone. Okay, and what about the occupying force of Minusta being there? <laughs> well, what I would say, basically, I think we will have to see who gets appointed in this cabinet. And um, I, I think, obviously, Minusta is going to play a key role, and the U.S. Embassy is going to play a key role, because those two sectors were very important in 
having Mickey leave the office and also bringing Prever. Without those forces, Prever would not have been the uh, provisional government uh, president at all. So therefore, I think what's going to happen, definitely there's going to be a lot of pressure on them to open up the electoral process. Because right now, the, the, final, the two final um, uh, candidates were Jovenel Moïse and Gilles Lestin. But as you know, Petit de Saline, Moïse Jean-Charles, and Maris Narcisse, who was there yesterday at the uh, inauguration, probably won't like to open up the process so that they can be included also. So therefore, it all depends whether he was going to open the whole process, which would be a Pandora's box. That means the elections will probably not take place in, 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 in 120 days. And also, that could set up a lot of other issues that Privia may not be able to control. All right. The other, the other thing also, it's a private sector. Yesterday, when he spoke, he effusively uh, thanked the private sector. Now, we know the private sector is divided also among two sectors. Those people who are more open toward uh, um, bringing businesses into Haiti, textile, uh, labor intensive, and businesses that are most, mostly dealing with commerce and trade who are not really doing any local investment. So these two sectors are going to be balancing and playing their roles to see wh whether they can influence uh, prevail also. And then you have the gangs. You have the streets uh, uh, crowds. Now, I'm making a difference between the gangs and the people that are on the streets that really got Mickey to live. The mm -hmm. gangs are controlled by various sectors in the country. Now, those gangs are not going to stay quiet until they get their part of the benefit also, because some of them might think that they're contributing in sending Mickey home. And then you have the popular organizations, the people who are on the streets every day claiming the, the departure of Mickey. Now, yesterday, we did not even thank these groups. He didn't recognize the G8, the eight political parties that came together to denounce the election. Now, the question is, will he be dealing with them? Or will he say, OK, you guys go home now, Mickey is gone, and uh, stay put? So therefore, I think all of these issues, if I were him, I would try to organize a government that could meet the basic demands of the population, which in 120 days, really, it's impossible to do, and it has to be clear with the people. Tell them about the economic situation. Right now, it's a 60 good for a dollar. So therefore, life is really expensive in Haiti, and the state coffers is empty. So he has to come clean with the population. Tell them the truth, and tell them what he can do in 120 days. And whatever, and there were a lot of secret deals that Meateli made before he left. For example, there is rumor that he leased Lagonav to a foreign company. He did it by decree, and this came out after he left. So he has to come clean, tell people the truth, and, and tell them also what he can do uh, in 120 days. In that case, he may be able to achieve something. But if he overpromised and he hired too many cabinet members, and too many consultants and advisors, then it's going to be trouble all over again. Yeah, and just want to let the viewers know, Lagunav is this island off the coast of Haiti. It's still a part of Haiti. But that is certainly troubling, and and, and I certainly hear you, Francoise, that uh, the truth shall set them free if, if we, we need to know what we're really dealing with in order to progress here. All right, Francoise Pierre-Louis, as well as Glenn Ford, thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.